I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I put in a way on my pound for pound list, I don't know, three years ago. Whatever it was. I don't even know how long. That's true. And no one. You've been on him before I even knew who he was. Uh, Ken, no one had him anywhere near it. They basically barely knew who he was, as you just touched on. And obviously, he dominated Fulton, or at least put it this way. He established control right from the start. He made Fulton... Fulton's a defensive fighter, a good counterpuncher. He made him concentrate more on defense and surviving than Fulton really wanted to early. He, he, he set the... Again, he set the course of the fight, the mentality of the fight, the theme of the fight, right from the start. Um, and had him thinking of surviving more than he wanted to think of surviving. He being Fulton. I'm not saying Fulton wasn't trying to win. He was. He's a confident, very proud fighter. And he's very strong mentally, too. I'm saying that he never fully got a chance to get into a, a gear that, that he'd have liked to where he could have gotten a rhythm going. Because in a way, put him right on his heels and, and a, a, bit, uh, a bit into, a, as I said, a defensive posture. Even though he's a defensive fighter who lives by defense and counters. In a way, mentally had him contained or limited a bit. You know, you have a lot of fast cars. You have Ferraris and all that stuff. So you would understand this. It's almost like putting somebody into a speeding car that's making turns at 120 miles per hour, and it's kind of hard to get comfortable behind the wheel when you're being tossed into the passenger seat. That's what it, <laughs> that's what it looked like to me, that, that he kept him under such pressure that he, he couldn't really get into the driver's seat. And the monster, I added a word to his name. The monster, I added a smart monster. And I said this before the fight, and I say it again, um, you know, that this was a matchup of styles that may have given you a glimpse of what a Pacquiao Mayweather fight would have looked like if it if the fight had not happened five years too late, where Pacquiao was still at his peak as a great offensive fighter, like Inouye is, and versus a great defensive fighter, you know, uh, obviously like Mayweather, which Fulton was known to be, although not at quite at the level of Mayweather. There's not too many guys at that level. But f to his credit, he had to go over to Japan. Fulton was ready mentally, physically, to give his best effort. And against any other fighter, Ken, at that weight, he probably would have won. But not against this. Not against this. You know, kind of like, Kind of like in the same situation. Who knew that the two pound-for-pound pound fighters fighting on the same week, that both of them would separate themselves the way they did and show you why they're so special. That, you know, both of them. Both of them. And I remember Pedro Martinez, you're getting another shout-out. I remember he said to me, Teddy, <laughs> in a way is number one pound-for-pound pound right now after his fight. And I said, okay, I get it. That's how great he, I get it, the way he dismantled Fulton, you know, similar to the way in some ways that, that it turned out that Crawford had uh, later on, a few days later, done to Spence. But at that point, in a way, had fought, Spence and Crawford hadn't fought yet. And I remember I said to Pedro, my friend, I said, wait until the Crawford fights, though. You got to wait because Crawford just might, not hit it out of the park. He might hit it out of the galaxy. Because, <laughs> and he did. He hit it out of the galaxy. Uh, in order, to, and you had to hit it out of the galaxy <laughs> to be better than, in a way, was. If, if that was possible. So, um, again, him and Crawford are separated from everyone else. Uh, it's number one and two, and then there's a, I'm, I'm sorry, there, there's a gap. In a way, just never let Fulton really get anything started or, as I said, any rhythm. He used his jab, again, similar to Crawford. He used, the jab was very important for, for in a way, and for Fulton. Very important. Most important weapon of the night. 
in a way uses his jab to stabilize Fulton on the outside. Then he plays good body shots to take some of his legs away. Uh, he was placing beautiful body shots. Uh, he stepped out of range very effectively, controlling distance. He was very good defensively. You know, everyone talked about Fulton's defense. In a way, his defense. Yeah, he's a great offensive fighter, but his defense, he was so good. He showed the ability to time punches, throwing them at the precise, proper time, like I talked about with Crawford. He set up combinations. He counted in spots. He cut the ring down when Fulton tried to use his legs, which he should have used, and he did try to use. He knew that Fulton was a very capable counterpuncher, so he knew why he wanted to press and push the fight. He could not be careless coming in, and yet he still found a way to be very aggressive in spots. And here's the thing nobody talked about, Ken. <laughs> he found a way to be very aggressive with a very good counterpuncher in spots. And he sent a message to Fulton that he was the boss. And he would not be given a second to catch his breath, to rest up, to get himself together, that he'd always be under the gun, as I said earlier, and always be the hunted one. He, he sent that message with his aggression. In spots, he got so aggressive where he, it almost looked like he was rushing in, which it was. But here's the thing that nobody picked up on. Nobody touched this. It was done without risk. Remember those spots where he came right after him? He, he came right after him like a badger. Yeah. He, and and you thought, oh, that might be that might be <laughs> yeah, a chance. Exactly right. That might be a chance to counter him. That might be a reckless moment. Nope. Nope. No. No. It was done without risk of ever being counted on the way in. You wanna know why? In a way, read the feet of Fulton. He read his feet. And as soon as he saw Fulton move his feet backwards, bang! He charged in like the Marines taking a hill. And, and <laughs> you know, he, he understood that Fulton had those moments. He, he understood that Fulton, in those moments, when he moved his feet backwards, he was not set to punch. So he wasn't dangerous. So he could come right in without any fear of being counted. So, yes, he was very aggressive in those spots. But for me, what he really was, he was brilliant, and he was opportunistic. That's what he was. In a way, in Crawford, they are, they, we are blessed to have them arrive. If we're sports fans, if we're boxing fans, we're bl so just as blessed as we were around, if you were around as a baseball fan with Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle and, you know, uh, pick your pick, Duke Snyder, you know, Henry Aaron, when they were around, that we were, you would have been blessed to be able to see those guys actually play in their prime. We are just as blessed as boxing fans to see these special men. <laughs>